Right uh, right, going to do a little planet stuff first. Uh, so, object list. Name star, no. Solar system, yes. Enter. Mercury, no. Jupiter's up. Jupiter. Jupiter, view object, yes. You can hear the mount going in the background there. This is Canon Live View. Right here. Got Astro Toaster running in the background there. Had a did a bit of drift aligning, but had a terrible time of it this evening. And uh, yeah, you can see all the pearl of little moons coming off the back end of it. Uh, let's just go up there. That's uh, ISO 100 at the moment, uh, two seconds simulated view in uh, the live view. Oops, I don't know what I did there. Let me just close that down. Back over here, drop that down. There we go. This is a zoom window, so you can click this button down here. It's not actual size, it should be a zoom window. There we go. So way too bright, so obviously start dropping this down. Uh, green here is because it's a modded camera and I'm trying out a new um, white balance setting. But uh, we'll see how we go. Keep going down, keep going down. Here come some bands. Very bad green hue with it though. So I'm going to go into this white balance shift thing here and so you see the green up here, I want to get away from that so I'll try and move it down about there. Yeah, looks a little bit better. And that'll do. Over there. Um, go in again, 200% view. It's very bad seeing tonight, or I've got a problem with my focusing, maybe. That's uh, really shocking. I might try and... Um, I haven't left the mask on, have I? Anyway, I may try and focus that a bit. Let's have a look. Oh, it's pretty low to the horizon. And there is bit of sky glow there too. You can see occasionally these glimpses of it looking all right. Anyhow, it is what it is. Tell you what I'll do. I'll go off to um, a crux that'll prove my focus or not. Object list. Enter. Name star. Yes. A crux. It's a double star, so it should show up nicely. View object. Yes. Get out of there. <sighs> Just got to put some gloves on. It's about 10 degrees here at the moment. It's starting to get winter. Oh, it's winter now. Tomorrow, next day, 29th today, so 30, 31, 30, a couple of days away. Here we go. Oh, I'll have to increase the exposure time, of course, but there it is. I can see it on the screen just here. I'll lasso it. Yeah, it's a little bit out with the go-to. Okay, so if I go up the exposure time, there we go. You can see the other little star coming out. Yeah, looks all right for focus. Yep, the other one is a, that one's a bluey. There's another one just off to this side here, which is a bit trickier to get without um, stuffing around. Uh, get in there. You can, see, you can see this is oval looking, because this bottom bit here, there's another star very close. That's a bluey, and that one's just very close. I'll try and see if we can tease it out. Down. You can really start to see now how that's a uh, double on the, just as the other neighbouring far away blue one dissipates, you'll see these start to split up. Come on, there we go. Twentieth of a second. Oh, look at that, it's really starting to show up. 
see that over there on the I'll just move this across a bit further f to the right there we go, double star a lot of atmospheric shimmer going on there eh yeah it's pretty cool anywho, it's going to do some stuff um, I just got a use my iPad press now so that I can get the current time the number of times that's caught me when I use Sky Safari and go huh how come it says you know so and so's up there and then you realize you were doing your planning the night before and um, you've still got it on set to the wrong thing <laughs> anyway so what do we got here let's go search I'll we'll go to DSA's uh, deep sky objects Click the button to turn that on so it shows them up in the heavens. Right, oh, here we go. Zoom out a bit. What do we got? Um, so the west is all right, but um, uh, let me see. What have we got? Anything interesting there? Well, before it sets, uh, we'll do the usual suspects. Uh, my goodness, that's low. The tarantula nebula is very, very low. But we've got to start low because the west is obviously stuff sinking over there pretty fast. And if we don't get it, um, we won't get it for tonight, if you know what I mean. It'll disappear real quickly. So the tarantula nebula is only at... 19 degrees I'll give some details about it shortly anyway it's NGC 2070 let's go there I don't want name star I want NGC catalog and it's 2070 enter hello zero come on there we go view object yes you can hear the mount slewing. Right, so to do this, I'm going to have to use Astro Toaster. And um, because I'm just doing uh, a bit of EAA stuff at the moment, I'm going to turn this, take this out of RAW. And I'm going to go to small but fine, whoops, there it is, small, that one, small but fine JPEGs. So that it processes a bit faster as I'm only going to be taking single sec uh, shots. You can see that smooth uh, curve on the icon there that obviously means it's a finer quality than this version which has got pixelated edges so I'm going to use that one I've got to get into Astro Toaster and change it to that because I usually shoot raw and stack lots of them anyway where are we uh, JPEG there we go blah, 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 blah. apply changes right uh, message text coming up is going to be NGC this is what's going to appear on the screen 2070 and show message uh, you'll see what I mean by that in a minute these are all my this is my drift aligning shots that I did um, so I might as well uh, that's all right they can stay there I'm pretty sure I was just thinking about unticking them anyway let's name the shot file name down here no I don't want Dav I want NGC 2070 and it's going to be ISO 800 low noise and seconds 30 to start with uh, and it's going to be x1 for times 1 because they're going to be single shots so that's what I'm going to call it uh, set toaster up to monitor the folder that it is getting the images from I'm only going to go single and I want it to refresh the viewer okay so what is this going to do I'll show you file list I'm just going to untick all those using this uncheck okay EOS utilities is going to take oops I better make that ISO 800 and I'll change this uh, get rid of the file list it overtakes everything I'll just go to bulb and then come back to 30 seconds here we go so what's going to happen is EOS utilities if you have a look under here very simple destination folder is macbook win documents astro toaster monitor so the astro toaster monitor folder is where these shots are going or astro toaster slash monitor 
and the file name that's going to come in it's going to be uh, ngc 2070 i70 s30 x1.jpg probably with a number after it see it's got the next frame is going to take is number 20 just here so it'll be named 20 so that's what it's going to do and it's going to come in right here uh, you can see the last shot was 19 and it was um, right there that was a uh, raw so it's going to come in here with that full name including the 20 and in this folder which Astro Toaster is monitoring and then it's actually going to show it in the viewer so we can uh, get the viewer up once that shot comes in I'll show you what it's going to do all right so oh and then all I did was I told it to by pressing this button here I told it to monitor this folder for any new shots I didn't tell it to stack I told it to just present it as a single image which it is and to refresh a viewer which is this thing right here okay this is my DAV shots where you drift the line and take an exposure and make sure that oh, I won't go into it here anyway that's what it is um, now color adjustments for my JPEG shots are to go logarithm expand of around about three to six where are we lost my there it is I'll click apply gradient because that's what it needs and then give it a bit of saturation up here normally about oops 10 or 12 is fine that'll do and that's pretty much it okay so let's click the shot off 30 second shot and I'll show you the file list over here and you'll see uh, what I mean well, I'll show you this file list in a minute because up here where it says monitor this will go blue as the shot is transferred to from the Canon to the um, Astro Toaster folder and then you'll see Astro Toaster status bar where I'm wiggling the mouse up here start to say it's processing anyway shutter's running now first time I've tried it out with this battery thing you saw that uh, it said monitor now it's up to here you'll see the file list there it is NGC 2070 i800 da, 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 shot number 20 it's processing it up here and about uh, 15 or 20 seconds it will appear here there it is um, now again color balance mm -hmm. I'm not overly happy with that color balance that I took with a digital gray card the other day I prefer the one where I shoot dark bitumen at midday darker than the normal grey but anywho it is what it is um, anyway um, what am I going to do I'll go into full screen viewer uh, which is how you generally do EAA uh, because you can then do have a bit of a wonder yeah I don't like that green so I'll turn the green down in this thing here at the moment uh, so you just tap that green move it down to the left a bit and again and again and again is this the old version must be because it's going the wrong way it's, it's increasing it the new version you move the sliders left to decrease the old version you move them left to increase and that's what was happening so I've got to go to the right with this version to take the green out <laughs> silly me and take it a bit more take it a bit more Oop, now I start to see a bit too much red and I'll probably do all right so the beauty with this is you can just click it one more time to get slightly bigger you just double tap it and there you go you can see hot pixels which always come out in the jpegs because the raw files actually have a um i forget what it's called it's got a bad pixel map and you can once you start taking long exposures and you start to get these hot pixels showing up you can as long as you don't turn the cannon off uh, you can uh, remap the bad pixels and the, they just disappear so it saves you taking uh, darks for the purposes of getting rid of the hot pixels but anyway pretty cool um, if you think it's a bit blown out in the core just drop the brightness a tad see that it gets rid of a bit of noise too 
Okay. So um, just on this, I tend not to worry. If you move the black points, you tend to clip all the fainter stuff. So I don't tend not to leave black point and white point totally alone. Um, so anyway, nice shot. So let's go somewhere else. Uh, let me just quick center on my iPad. That's that. Uh, moving up. Oh, gee, can I get 47 tuck from here? I'm not sure if it's, it's there's kind of like a hill in the way down there, but I'll try it out anyway. Uh, spectacular object. Biggest globular cluster. Let me just go and click center. Info. Righto, <clears throat> NGC29, oh, hang on, that's a small Magellanic cloud. Uh, I want 47 tuck in the middle of it. No. Come on, iPad. No, I don't want small Magellanic cloud. Tap again, Lambda. No, no. Oh, for goodness sake, I'll zoom in a bit and see if I can absolutely tell it. That one. There we go. NGC104, righto. So escape on the hand control, 104, view object, here it goes. While it's doing it, I'll get out of the full screen viewer. We'll name this shot, and by the way, why do I name them? I'll show you in a second. Uh, file name, so this is going to be right there. NGC, back, 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 back. This is, what is it, 104. One zero four. Oh, it's doing a meridian flip or something. Anyhow, okay, so um, it's ready to go. I'll just click the shot off. So what, uh, what's the use of naming them? It means tomorrow I can easily see in this folder by navigating to the monitor folder, the astrotoaster slash monitor folder, you can see the names of the files. It saves you, um, if, if they're all called the same thing, it's really hard to pluck them out and put them in directories as your photographic history of what you saw on the evening. <clears throat> so... Um, it's much easier to just name them. Uh, of course, the um, the viewer needs changing as well. So you'll see that you hear the shutter uh, click before. And um, here it comes. It's coming in now. You can see the shot appeared there. And shortly, if we go out of that file list um, to the full screen viewer, you'll see this image change very shortly. It'll be zoomed in exactly like that with the same color adjustments of 47 tuck and no it's below trees or something over there isn't it now the other thing is you can see down here it's still got the image viewer still contains the wrong name here so it doesn't matter because i uh, couldn't see it anyway it's behind the tree or a mountain or something over there bit of a shame so we'll um, go to the normal viewer and okay so let's go somewhere where we can see it um zoom out what else is quickly sinking below that horizon i'm zooming across here no that's really low really low really low. beehive cluster my goodness me that's really close to the um, um can we see that stuff uh, let's go not quite sure the spindle galaxy how big is that center this is on the ipad and sky safari um oh very very tiny seven arc minutes uh, we could give it a hit but seven arc minutes is really tiny so we'll see what we can do so it's ngc 3115 escape 3115 enter view object yes Okay, so we'll set this up properly this time. Uh, we go to file list, and down here, this is the message text to put on this window. We'll just click that there. So it puts the right window uh, name on the thing. 3115, when we start to view it. Okay, you'll, as I click that, see it changes it down there to 3115, even though it's just 
just a text message and we'll set up a shot also to be called 3115 and back across back 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 3115 now this is going to be really tiny because I've got a 1.2 degree field of view of this camera so uh, this is only uh, seven arc minutes in size and we might have to go a bit longer as well but we'll give it a hit good fun I haven't shot JPEGs for a long time I've been shooting you know, 60 second, 90 second and taking nine of them in RAW RAW as I said you can get rid of those um, the hot pixels um, and it, it is a, a better processing but as you saw by that previous image very quick to do use JPEGs because JPEGs will apply basically in camera all of the um, uh, color adjustment settings if you for want of a better word like a raw front a raw frame of the same exposure would be very very black but when you shoot in JPEG it comes oh there it is it looks um, fine and again I'm not bang on with my go-to's and I don't really care so if we just go into because I'm basically looking at stuff right this is um, EAA rather than or video astronomy rather than um, particularly making pretty pictures so if I zoom in several times um, you only have to click that once by the way and it kind of goes to the last there's a fuzzy there too you can see one um, so let's Ah, looks like I had some sort of a bounce going on too. I can see a double step bounce going on. That's a bit odd. I'll um, shoot it again. So, out of full screen. I've been running my camera and all sorts of things off a, um, a little, uh, what do you call it, inverter. And I'm hoping that hasn't drained the battery. Because <laughs> I've been out here for quite a while now about three hours well got dark about five set up and then I've zoomed all over the place till now and it's about eight o'clock I think or eight thirty anyway <coughs> there's the shutter and you should see up here status bar will change very shortly <coughs> as it processes the shot and then once that disappears up there that yellow color this will be it hope oh yes you see the stars all fine up there beautiful must have had it's not totally windy here but there is a breeze going on anyway big Newtonian so no doubt it's bouncing around anyway once again because we zoomed in we can drop that brightness just to try and get rid of and there we go get rid of that background noise uh, because I've zoomed in, I can drag that up a tad. And there it is, the Spindle Galaxy, yada, yada, yada. So, <coughs> yeah, pretty cool. Um, done. There's another bunch of stuff around here. What's this? The Sectans Dwarf Galaxy. It sounds small if it's dwarf. Let's have a look. I'm tapping the screen. Come on. There we go. Uh, huh? it says it's 30 arc minutes but there's no picture of it no oh, let's go there what's its number it is hmm, PGC 88608 huh well that's odd I haven't got PGC on my hand control. Anyway, by the way, I'm just going to get some info on that spindle galaxy. Visual magnitude of 8.9. Um, one of two different objects known as a spindle galaxy. Huh. It's a bright lenticular galaxy, smooth disk galaxy without significant spiral structure, located in the constellation Sextans. The other spindle galaxy is NGC 5866 in the constellation Draco. William Herschel discovered 3115 a spindle galaxy in 1787. Man, they must have had some dark skies in those days. Uh, light years away, must be somewhere in this thing. I like looking at that. There you go, 32 million light years away. 
So one light year is about nine and a half trillion kilometres, or around about six trillion miles. And if you did that six trillion mile trip 32 million times, that's how far away that spindle galaxy is. And with a grand's worth of scope and $400 second hand camera and $400 laptop, we're looking at it right there. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, let's go. I'm not going to look for that PGC thing because I don't have such a catalog in my in my uh, system. Oh, there's a little Markarian chain up there too, a bit north. We might uh, go and do that because that is quite uh, spectacular and fun. And there's a black eye galaxy and stuff over there too. So we might uh, hang around this area for a bit. So I'll go to... There's the eyes. There's the chain. They're all over the place there. My goodness me. Um, so, very small uh, galaxy. Uh, we're going to go to Messier 99. Well, I'll type in the um, NGC catalog number as I'm in the NGC catalog. NGC 4254 And what it is, is the Coma, or Coma, Coma Pinwheel Galaxy. It's a beautiful spiral galaxy in the southern part of Coma Berenses, seen almost face on. Very tiny though, five arc minutes in size. Here it is, um, back into the normal viewer, should have named the shot. Here we go, file name down here. Let's go and have a look at this one. It is 4254. At least the shot's going to be named so I can grab it. I might not worry, I'm not stacking, so I'm just going to take that name that appears off the screen. File list, uh, we're there, so back over to here. Let's click the shot and get into the full screen viewer. And we might zoom out because we're going to need. Let me just go like this, center that up. Okay, I'm going to click the unzoom button because it often, there you go, you saw it. Oops, going too far. Right, let's drag that to the center. Zoom in one notch. And that'll do until we get to see it, eh? There's the shutter. So about 15, 20 seconds, we'll see this tiny little Coma Pinwheel Galaxy, somewhere in the field of view. And there it is. It's not a long shot, so there's not a lot of detail, but you can pick out that it has spiral arms. I'll brighten that up and stuff in a minute. Let's just get over here. Brighten it up, I can expand. Now, here's a point where I've got the um, brightness down a bit. So if I go up, five notches just so it's back to zero there it is you can see the arms but there's another way of doing it and it's this expand the further you move it so I'll go to six whoops too far and click this by gradient you can see shortly what it'll do to the shot there you go it brightened it up and it also introduces noise because it's really starting to stretch it um, as they say, but um, there it is, it's not bad, now I could go 60 seconds or start stacking, but again I really don't you know, give a toss, It's I'm already seeing it, and um, let's zoom in again, zoom in again, and there it is, drop the brightness, terrible noise there, doesn't matter, let's drop the brightness down a tad, okay, drop my contrast go up just a tad, good enough you can see the arms you can see bits of the the blue arms and my iPad which has Sky Safari shows very much that these are blue arms my image is upside down compared to the one in Sky Safari this big long almost disassociated from this object this long arm coming down here is in fact uh, uppermost in my image so if I go rotate a couple of times here I'll show you what it looks like on my iPad uh, kinda, kinda looks like that. 
Actually, no, it looks a bit. It looks more like that. Big arm up there and littler arms down here. <clears throat> so anyway, discovered in 1781 by Charles Messier, colleague and friend Pierre Mach Michain, along with the nearby galaxies of 98 and 100. It is a fainter Messier object at magnitude 9.9 .9 and only 5.4 arc minutes. So within the north and south sides of the core, the spiral arms curve counterclockwise. They do. Uh, the more prominent southern arm arcs towards the west. Uh, they call that the southern arm because it starts at the south and then curves back that way, I guess. Um, the familiar shorter arm towards the northeast. So, hmm, that must be north, north, south, east, west. Okay. Uh, blah, blah. The conspicuous dark gap separates the galaxy's core from the western curve of the southern arm. And it does indeed. You can see this big dark band just there where I'm waving the mouse. So, pretty cool. Uh, if we zoom in a bit more, you'll see that better. Again, lots of noise when we zoom in like this, but eh, what the hey. Um, brightness, let's drop that down a tad. Here we go. So what they're talking about is this arm here is called the southern arm because it starts down here. There is a dark dust lane or gap just here between the core and it, and the other arms are all around this side here. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right, where are we going next? I'll go and do the eyes galaxies. And actually, what's further south before it disappears? I noticed there was a couple of things down there. We've done the needle galaxy. Or did we? Yeah, I think we did. So that was... Uh, let me just check the info on that. No, we didn't. That's pretty big, needle galaxy. We'll go do that before it disappears. So the Needle Galaxy, it's further south, is uh, NGC 4565. 4565. View object. Here we go. Yeah, I better zoom out because this is really heavily zoomed in. And I've got to remember, I've got lots of, here we go, got lots of things changed on this, saturation brightness, brightness is way down, so I'll just get it back to zero, and drop the contrast by two, and take that expand back to three, and take the road, I'll well, actually rotate, should be alright for that one. Anyway, um, next, back to viewer. Name the shot so I can pick it up tomorrow. It is NGC 4565. 1, 2, 3, 4565. Enter, and we'll shoot it. And again, it's so tomorrow I can uh, easily see now which shots are what put them in folders as a record of tonight's observing using JPEGs again as I said these aren't nice raw shots of fantastic images this is just show you what's possible to zoom around really quickly you know people will say you can take you know five second shots and stack a hundred of them well it's still 500 seconds this is 30 seconds and we're getting what we're getting. So this is a needle galaxy. It's a mag 9.6 and spiral galaxy, but it's 15 arc minutes. So it should be a little bit bigger than this one, or well, three times as big as that, because there it is. And uh, that's pretty spectacular. So again, uh, we'll go full screen. You can see, here it is. Uh, we'll just zoom in. And I've got Definitely that's the way my uh, sky safari is presenting it as well in that angle. So I'll go like this and just drop the brightness because that'll clean up a little bit of that noise. And you can still see it. Here we go. And if I do grab 
the white point just a tad it hopefully will brighten up the galaxy without might have to increase contrast no nah, it's better to go contrast so. so let me just go contrast and there we go all right and once again with contrast a bit of noise coming in the background so I'll just darken the background with one notch of anti-brightness and there we have it I'll go in even further it's going to be very noisy the more you zoom in of course but there you go so let's have a talk about that one so Coma Berenices is one of the most prominent and famous edge-on spiral galaxies in the sky called the Needle Galaxy discovered by William Herschel in 1785 and visible through a small telescope some sky enthusiasts consider NGC 4565 to be a prominent celestial masterpiece Messier Mist hmm, interesting so Messier Mist a large dust lane cuts across the nucleus of the galaxy and you can certainly see that you can see that black area going right through look at the core that's brightness of stars that they're all stars in that bowl see that's incredible um what else it blocks and reddens this is the dark and dust lane it blocks and reddens the light from the interior and is easily seen in an 8 inch telescope the edge on galaxy very much like the other two notable examples um, which are m104 and m891 30 to 50 million light years distance so six and a half trillion miles or sorry six trillion miles and you do that trip 30 to 50 million times and that's how far away it is or in kilometers 9.5 trillion kilometers and you do that trip 30 or 50 million times and you'll be there that's pretty sweet all right again let's uh, zoom out Matter of fact, I'm going to leave the brightness on that for this because we're going to go and do Mercurian Mark chain or whatever else. Oh, black eye galaxies up above on the way to the Mercurian. That's a lovely object. So we'll go and do the black eye galaxy center information. It is uh, NGC 4826 or Messier 64. So obviously Messier saw this thing as well. 4826, 4826, enter. Enter, view object, enter. Slewing away. I am going to zoom out, otherwise when we try to zoom in it's going to resort to its last memory of what it zoomed to, which is crazy. So let's just zoom in a bit now. Alright, so back to the normal viewer. We'll go and name the shot so we can pick it up tomorrow. And file name. Let's go back this way. One, two, three, four. It is uh, 4826. 4826. And there it is. And let's go. So, lovely object this. I like the Black Eyed Galaxy. So, let's go full screen. And um, yeah. It's quite big. Um, about 10 arc minutes so not quite as big as that but should show up quite nicely and I've kind of got the right color settings for the spindle and as this is slightly brighter at 8.5 magnitude we should see it pretty easy 30 second shot there's the shutter should be coming in across the top little status bar ticking across yellow and about to process it when that yellow disappears it this should refresh there it is so all my go-to's are either well they're actually down here and if I rotate they end up up there but anyway let's go and zoom in on that little thing it's a pretty cool little thing isn't it look at that so let's drag that down uh, once again reduce the noise by just dropping brightness at Ted there we go um, and I've still got that green hue going on there a bit I'll have to take another color balance tomorrow again using my normal method I don't know why I read it on the web and they said oh you've got to use digital gray don't use white because normally a white card is used for white balance 
and um, it works but I found shooting quite dark black bitumen in the shade when the sun's pretty high so it's got to be in the shade so it is quite black bitumen and it gives this modded camera a really cool colors by the way you heard me say modded then if I, if I use my normal Canon 700D which isn't modded there's really not a lot of difference seriously you'll get shots like this using an unmodded camera without any problem at all um, all the modded camera does is give you a red hue over absolutely everything and it's really tough to edit your photographs so that you don't have absolutely everything red. Very tough to adjust the, bal the uh, colour balance using these red, green and blue sliders in any Astra software. So invariably, as per Jerry Rodriguez, who says award-winning astrophotography, he says your colour balance that you shoot digital grey card and um, it's colour balanced. Anyhow, so I might just drop the green again here. So dropping in this one is to the right that'll do anyway so uh, it is a spiral galaxy um, discovered by Edward Pigeot in March of 1779 and Charles Messier in 1780 the dark dust feature was discovered by Herschel who observed it twice in 1785 and 1789. It's visible even in small telescopes and can be glimpsed, wow, with good binoculars. Yeah, interesting. An irregular shape with very uneven brightness and texture. Overall, a bright oval orientated east, south, east, west, northwest with a bright large core. The large dark lane on the disc resembles a black eye. gives rise to its nickname. nickname. So that's obvious. That's dust. I'll zoom in again. You can see it there again. Lots of lots of noise because it's a single image. Anyway, um, the galaxy's inner region has a radius of approximately 3,000 light years, while the outer section another 40,000. So 3,000, and if you had a good enough, longer or enough, multiple stacked exposures, you'd see dust lanes right out there. We haven't got long enough with a single 30 second shot to do that. Anyhow, pretty cool. All right, so where are we going next? Next, we will go to um, uh, the Mercurian chain now it's so big and there's so many galaxies in this thing I am going to struggle to figure out which one I can get which way is my camera at the moment I wonder orientated um, I will try for centering on that one NGC 4443 so 4443 enter view object yes there goes the mount now I'll zoom out again drag it across Maybe zoom out one more time. Yep, that's okay. In one more time. Right, uh, just go to the normal viewer. Come over here, change the name of the shot. And what was it again? 4443, I think it was. Click, back across. Back, back, back. Jeez, it's getting cold here. Whew. Hope it doesn't dew up. Alright, let's take that shot. So, 30 second shot. Markarian's chain. Whole bunch of galaxies. Uh, we'll try and... Hopefully I'm in the right spot to get um, the various ones so I can name them. Should be, given those other shots are in the right orientation of the camera, if you know what I mean compared to my Sky Safari. We'll soon see. I think it might be the right angle way. 90 degrees. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We'll soon find out. And I might have 
to stop and start the video if it gets too long it, yeah, you can see them all there um, they're all over the left here though let me just go full screen I'll show you what I mean okay let's zoom in one notch well is that gone and zoomed a heap you can see them all over on the left there so galaxy 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 so a little bit of a loopy spiral like that how is that orientated ah mm -hmm. i think that one right there is the one we're looking at and these two down here uh, this one is 4477 this next one is 4473 this one is uh, 4443 this one right here believe it or not is also a galaxy and it is far far away called uh, NGC 4458 it's mag 12 that's a Meg 12 right there. Um, so, my field of view, the eyes galaxies are to the left. Uh, no, hang on. The eyes galaxies are up this way, up further. So, which way do I have to move? If that's upside down, that's a declination for me to go, I think. I think <clears throat> interesting I think that's a declination so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the up arrow which is a declination button for just a few seconds take another shot and see which way these things all just uh, move so let me zoom out okay I'm just let me grab that and all right that's good enough shot all right so if i go let's see th uh, three seconds on the up arrow 1001 1002 1003 all right so back to the normal view another 30 second shot i don't think there's enough bright stars there for me to do a live view, Canon live view uh, move. I'll try that in a second. Anyway, if I put my mouse on 4443, we'll see which way it moves. I'm just trying to fit a bit more of the chain in, basically. So see which way that jumps Gee, three seconds moved to the heap didn't it okay what's that one I think that's okay <laughs> Uh, right. Oh, it moved to the left. I was pointing there. So that's that way. Oh. So that one. Hmm. Oh, I see that one. That one is a really bright one up in the north on my sky safari. It's a uh, Virgo A, Messier 87, a mag 8.6 elliptical galaxy, that's what that is, so, oh, okay, so now on Sky Safari, I see which way, that moves me up that way, so I've actually got to go to the left a bit, and my camera is in totally the wrong orientation, <laughs> I should grab it out of the scope and rotate it 90 degrees, but then I'd lose focus, anyway, I'm going to move it, mm, so, kind of, 
kind of got everything that way. Actually, it's not. Okay, let me try. This one right here. I'm going to go left with the left button. 1001, 1002, 1003. Part of the fun of doing IVAA. So let's see where this one disappears to. It's either going to go that way or disappear. Well, actually, hang on. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm confused. I just don't have a big enough field of view to get the whole chain in. Is the problem. I might have to go off to some other stuff. We'll see. I want to try and get the eyes galaxies. I like them. Like a couple of cat's eyes in the dark. Let's see where it goes. Well, there's the cat's eyes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are the cat size. I'll show you what they look like. Full screen. Yep, there they are. So let's I suppose I could have typed the leaning names in. Just drag them down. Yep, that's the cat size. Oh, that is so cool. Maybe it's because I've rotated the images around that I'm getting confused. But anyway, we've got them. That's the cat size galaxies. Really cool couple of objects up there in the Markerian chain. Uh, so if I click on one of them, center information. The eyes galaxies are a pair of galaxies, blah, 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 blah. Blowing a string of galaxies across the heart of the uh, cluster known as the Markerian chain. Nicknamed the eyes by the 19th century observer L.S. Copeland. Their likeness to a pair of eyes emphasised the fact they're both elongated. Correct. Ah, beautiful. So one of them is a magnitude 10.1. And um, it's this bigger one. And could be a merger between two galaxies, they say. And 52 million light years away. I won't go through the maths again. And they appear to be about 100,000 light years apart. And they're likely to have approached to within an estimated 16,000 light years of each other in the cosmic past because there are gravitational tides from the close encounters which have ripped away at their stars, gas and dust. And that more massive of the two galaxies has managed to hold on to much more material from the collision. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's that. What else is up here before? Oh, geez, it's getting cold. Ah, look, I'll start to go to a few more interesting nebulas and stuff. What have we got? Um, bidi, 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 bidi. Um, we've got to orientate it around this way, west. All right, we'll go to some nice little star clusters here now. We're sort of working our way up. Um, I'm going to stop that video too before I forget. So let me just go to the normal viewer and pause that video. And I'll put part two in to my uh, YouTube channel shortly.